We started in, uh, you know, New Year's of 1968. And, uh, inspired a little bit by uh, a tiny headline on the New Year's Day paper in 1968 that said, uh, Nation Ends Violent Year. And, you know, we now know that 1968, probably other than 1863, one of the worst years in U.S. history. And, uh, you know, I wanted to sort of capture where all of our characters are, which is really what the story is about. Um, it's not a history lesson or anything, but to get this idea of what I feel has some relationship to right now also, which is a, a state of anxiety, which on some level, and this is, you know, we finished the season now, it isn't all edited, but I sort of, you know, I always know where we're going, but now that we've sort of like executed it on some level, I think about anxiety and I say, uh, you know, Anxiety is a physiological response to danger. It's an anticipation of danger. And it's, uh, it causes you know, nervousness and all of these sort of terrible feelings and people will medicate themselves in various ways, doing anything they can to not really turn inward. And that's kind of what's going on this season, at least so far. Uh, January, who is, uh, <laughs> who is Betty in your view and, and, and how is she becoming a different woman this year? Um, I mean, answering that question is as hard as saying who I am, I guess. Um, I think she's just a woman who's constantly struggling to find what is going to make her happy in life. And maybe when she is presented with something that she thinks is going to make her happy, when she finds out it doesn't, she's just, I don't know that she deals with disappointment well or her emotions. Um, I think she's trying to be a good mother, trying to be a good wife. Um, and I think in you know, the recent episodes, we've seen her about as happy as we've ever seen her. Um, I think that she is, uh, she loves her husband and she's happy and she's just struggling with, um, you know, I think the weight gain was a, you know, a result of, you know, emotional depression or something. Uh, maybe Matt would answer that better. Are we hunger? Yeah. Why the way? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that she's Bugles. allowing herself to eat, so she's ha as happy as we've seen her because she's getting to eat. <laughs> you ate plenty when you were married to me. God damn it! There was food in that goddamn kitchen all the time. You never saw Betty eat. You never did. When Don met Betty, he was uh, completely over the moon. Uh, and, and thought that this, this woman was unattainable. And the fact that that, that, that worked out somehow was, was blew his mind. When we see Don meet Megan, uh, there's this lightness and joy about Don that we haven't seen in a long time, coming off of this season-long downward spiral. Um, and I think when we see some of the, the, there are other women in Don's life where, where we see sparks of that. Uh, uh, and, and then there are, are women who it's, it's purely carnal or purely uh, lustful. Um, so I think, I, you know, I, I don't really, I can't really answer it um, uh, with any, with any uh, veracity in any way, shape or form, just because I, 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 don't think, I don't think it exists in his world. We've got tension with Mr. I can't believe you would touch another person outside our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> leave, a, leave a penny under the mat. Uh, and your character has been so interesting to watch, this, this uh, just evolution as, as we watch. How do you see her right now? Who do you believe you are playing? Oh, well, I, I love Megan. I realized that at the end of last season. Um, you know, when I first started, there was almost nothing on the page for her. And, um, things came out in bits and pieces, and uh, somewhere during last season, I realized, oh my god, I love this woman. So uh, I think this year we see her, you know, she, she feels like she has it all um, because she's got her career, it is going well, um, and she's got this wonderful husband and this great family and uh, beautiful apartment and everything 
as far as she's concerned, is uh, quite lovely. You know, obviously there are always tensions in a relationship, and she understands that it must be difficult for her husband to have her go to work and, and have a love scene with somebody else. But, um, but that's a normal tension, and of course, she's not privy to the rest of the stuff. <laughs> How much denial is she in, Jessica? You know what, I, uh, I think she trusts him, and I think she's optimistic. I think she's an optimist. So you can call it naivete if you want to, but I, I think that's because you get to see what, what Don does, and that Megan doesn't have that, so. Does Megan have a sense of smell when he flops into bed? <laughs> <laughs> Do you conjure the feeling of your first part because you so beautifully um, conjure on screen the excitement of coming home and telling your husband, if he's around, that uh, things might start happening for you at work and that this is, this is real and this is what you hope for. Um, yeah, I don't have to think about that at all. It's how I feel every single day of my life when I work with these guys. I cannot believe how lucky I am. <laughs> and honestly, like what you're asking about uh, people recognizing you on the street, uh, I. I'm so much more excited than somebody who recognizes me. On the <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, you're Megan, you're a madman. And I'm like, I know! <laughs> fucking crazy! John Slattery, what is in the glasses you guys are drinking? And what <laughs> is in the cigarettes you guys love smoking? <laughs> um, speaking for myself, I drink, a, Roger drinks a Gibson which is a vodka with an onion in it. Uh, so I am drinking, thank you. I am drinking uh, onion, onion water. Tri-state area. <laughs> yeah. Where the, uh, no clapping for onion water, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm, uh, I'm onion water enjoying is really at, in effect at 5 o'clock or wow, 6 o'clock in the morning. Nice. Baked cigarettes, those are herbal cigarettes. Uh, who knows what's in those? Rose petals, marshmallow, I don't know. I found a piece uh, of plastic in one. Plastic. Uh, they're very healthy. But you inhale, I mean, you guys inhale yeah. those. Yeah, there's things. just no nicotine or tar, which makes there them, are, course, you know, healthy and safe. <laughs> Who, at long last, is Pete Campbell? Defend yourself. <clears throat> Yikes. Well, I think uh, Pete comes from a family that has a, a long history in America, and, you know, they had money and they had a name and they had a, a, a line of work that everyone in the family did and Pete didn't do that, you know, he didn't, he didn't fall in line with what his family always, always wanted him to do and what they always thought he would do and he went out on his own and he, um, in a way he's very brave for doing that and he's quite loyal actually um, to Don Draper and uh, but, but you're right. I mean, there are other, are other sides of him. He, he's ambitious, and, and he can be ruthless, and he, uh, I think from the outside, he can be seen, seen as petulant and, um, uh, you know. Obsequious? <laughs> <laughs> is, is he obsequious? Yeah, just toss it out, guys. No. <laughs> I, think, I mean, that's a perfect, I mean, it's your character. Obsequious. He's, 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 he manages up. Okay. <laughs> But, I, I mean, he's, I don't know if he looks up to Don Draper. I don't know, I mean, people, people say, I think he looks up to him, but at this point, by the end of season five, I think it was more about managing Don Draper. And I think he's seen behind the curtain. He knows that Oz is not the great powerful wizard. He knows that Oz is kind of an alcoholic who needs, you know, <laughs> a lot of management. And he needs to make sure that when Don's ready, that the clients are ready, and when the clients are ready, if Don's not ready, that he can cover. And um, I don't know if he's trying to be Don Draper anymore. Kiernan, who would you say is your mom and dad on the set? I I wouldn't think of it as who's my mom and who's my dad. Just we're more all like a family, if that makes sense. We're just all we're close. We all like each other. I'm lucky to know these guys. They're awesome. So I think it's just it's just everybody knows each other well, but there's no really significant. Person that's the mom, person that's the dad. That's not anyone, what they say about you. Anyone you, you're the mom. Yeah. Anyone on the cast you wouldn't let drive you home, for example, after work. <laughs> I'm sorry, would you say that? Anyone on that? the cast you wouldn't let drive you home after work, or are they all nice people? They're all nice people. Okay. 